Thank you, Florian, for the nice introduction. So I'm going to talk about um, our product, Data Artisans Platform. Um, and my name is Robert. I'm a co-founder of Data Artisans, as Florian said already. And I'm leading the team that is building our products. So when we started um, thinking about commercializing Data Artisans and doing something beyond Apache Flink, um, we realized that our mission is bringing stream processing to the enterprise. Um, because stream processing is a new technology and enterprises want to learn from the things that we have learned by working with early adopters of Flink. And um, in our experience, or when we started building the product, there were two types of users that we were um, aiming at. One type is companies that are using um, Flink in production um, and they are looking to um, widen their use of Flink. Um, in their organization. For these companies, um, they usually want to have a, um, they want to build an internal streaming platform so that they do all the integration work um, with like um, storage systems, logging, metrics, authentication, and so on only once. Um, and then they scale to different use cases within their organization. Um, one prominent example um, of an early adopter of Flink is Netflix. At Flink Forward San Francisco, they talked about their stream processing as a service platform where engineers working on a specific use case um, can just go on a portal and submit their um, streaming job. And Data Artisan's platform and our products are basically our opinionated approach, how we think companies um, can adopt um, Apache Flink within their organization. And all the lessons that we've learned are also very helpful for companies that are just getting started with stream processing. Because we provide the right tools from day one. We provide all the integrations and all the knowledge that we've gained from working with these early adopters um, packaged into a product. Um, and then there's a third motivation for our product since it's built on top of Kubernetes and container technologies. And that is that Containers provide very nice abstractions and a lot of people are adopting um, container technologies for that reason. But usually um, they don't provide you with um, abstractions or their container um, managing tools don't um, have the domain knowledge of a stateful stream processor. So if you're doing operations like scaling up or scaling down or migrating and so on, um, you're losing state or you need to build your own tooling um, for um, maintaining your state. And this is another thing that we are trying to solve with Data Artisans platform. So the product consists of the following um, components. Um, the main thing is Application Manager, a proprietary software that we've built. Um, then, of course, we include a enterprise um, distribution of Apache Flink including support by data artisans, by our engineers. And as of this conference, also um, Streaming Ledger, a library for serializable asset transactions on top of streaming data. We are also providing some additional um, components like a um, logging stack, the ELK stack. Um, for metrics, we're providing InfluxDB and Grafana um, and some API endpoints for CI/CD integration. And the idea for these um, like gray boxes, logging and metrics and so on is that companies that are just getting started that don't have the logging and metrics infrastructure in place have the right tools from day one. Like this is like a blueprint infrastructure that we are proposing for stream processing. But for companies that are using already a metrics or logging solution, we recommend integrating this with a existing solution also to have a holistic view of all the um, all the data that you are receiving. And this whole package, this whole product um, is built on top of Kubernetes. So we're providing tooling for installing it on Kubernetes. Um, and yeah, all the components are um, dockerized. And also as of this conference, um, we've launched a new edition of our um, Data Artisans platform product. So the stream edition is what we have announced um, earlier this year. It includes Apache Flink with uh, support and application manager. And the newly released River Edition now includes Streaming Ledger, 
um, with a parallel distributed runtime for transaction processing on top of Flink. And um, support is a really important aspect of our product, in particular for enterprises adopting Flink and Data Artisan's platform. Usually they want somebody to call in the night um, if the system breaks, they want to have um, bug fix releases um, with like very fast and um, for some of the support plans we also offer a technical account manager which will really know your infrastructure, know your specific requirements. And another very important part of our product is the streaming ledger that we've announced yesterday. Um, I think this is going to uh, make a big difference in the streaming space in the coming um, years. It is a library on top of Apache Flink that allows you to treat state as a top-level entity. So instead of the state being encapsulated within operators, um, state becomes a concept that is global to the Flink job and you can mutate the state um, transactionally spanning multiple keys or multiple states or tables um, in a transactional consistent way. Um, so I would really recommend to scan this QR code and read the white paper. Um, it's pretty good. It answers a lot of questions around performance, use cases, um, how we've implemented it, details about the guarantees that we're get, um, giving. Um, so this is something I recommend to read on the flight back or on the ride back. Um, but the main component I would like to talk about is Application Manager. So that's the proprietary software that we've built as part of Data Artisan's platform. Um, and the, the key features of Application Manager is its ability to um, deploy and manage um, app Flink applications on top of Kubernetes. Um, as of um, the latest release of Data Artisan's platform, it includes um, security features such as single sign-on, API tokens, namespaces, um, it provides endpoints for integration with logging and metric services. It provides a very nice um, single-page JavaScript application as a user interface and a very well-documented REST API with a Swagger spec so that you can build your own clients for um, Application Manager. The API of Application Manager is independent of the Flink release. It's a very nice abstraction. You're not um, limited or you don't have to like Flink version-specific code. Um, and it solves a lot of problems around configuration and metadata management. Um, and I don't know who attended yesterday the panel that I moderated. Um, they are basically the conclusion of all the people from like Netflix, Lyft and so on was that deployment and operations are really the, the difficult um, part um, when it comes to bringing a stream processing application to production. And um, the main abstraction of um, their platform and application manager is actually inspired by Kubernetes um, as we provide also a declarative specification. So you just specify what you want. So you specify an application that contains a certain um, jar, a certain parallelism, certain Flink configuration, resources. You submit this to application manager and application manager makes sure that this um, defined specification um, becomes a reality. In return, you're getting log messages from Flink, you're getting status reports, um, you're getting access to the user interfaces that are integrated with Application Manager. And the beauty of this declarative um, specification is that it's very easy to um, control a Flink job. So if you're changing the state from running to cancelled, we will deallocate the resources on Kubernetes. If you're changing the parallelism from 60 to 80, we will um, talk to Kubernetes to scale up the resources. Now, you might say this is actually something that Kubernetes natively supports. You can just change um, the replication in Kubernetes and then the number of machines goes up. The good thing about Application Manager and their platform is, is that it is state aware. So if, when you're scaling up, um, it will not only increase or change the number of resources, it will also migrate your state to the new cluster. And if you combine the declarative application specification with this state awareness, um, then you're getting a lot of um, features that are solving day-to-day -day operational tasks. So you can, for example, upgrade the Flink job. So if you have a bug in your Flink use case and you fix it, you just um, change the jar, um, change the specification of your deployment, and it will do a stateful upgrade um, to this newer um, 
implementation. You can also change the flink version, change the parallelism, resource allocation, configuration parameters, and also suspend and resume a deployment, for example, if you want to do maintenance on your cluster. On top of that, Application Manager is also keeping track of everything you're doing. And since Application Manager is state aware, it keeps track of the state at certain points in time and also the code. And this effectively means that you can version um, state and um, application logic as one unit. And this allows you to also go back in time. So if you're um, doing an experiment, you're deploying a new version and you're realizing there's a bug in there, you can just reset your deployment to an older version and the code and the state will go back. This also allows you to do experiments um, by forking older versions um, and running your job with a different parameter or with a different implementation. Um, and I believe this is quite powerful for experimenting, but also for debugging if you want to know um, why something, why a certain error has occurred at a certain point in time. So that's like the elevator pitch um, of the benefits of Application Manager. And now I would like to give you a short update of um, what we have done um, in the recent past. Before I do that, I will quickly talk about the history of our product. So at this conference last year, we announced a closed beta of Data Artisan's platform. We then um, gave access to a few early access customers to work with them, learn from them um, what problems they have and what features they need. At Fling Forward San Francisco um, in April this year, we announced um, general availability of Data Artisan's platform 1.0. And in July, we uh, released the Data Artisans Platform 1.1 1 .1, uh, release, including Flink 1.5 support, batch support for deployments, and a lot of um, small improvements around um, Kubernetes interoperability so that you can forward volume mounts, annotations, and a lot of other things you need um, if you're seriously using this in production. And today, basically, we are announcing um, Data Artisans Platform 1.2 which mainly adds features around security. And um, as you saw yesterday in the keynote, we are also announcing a new edition, the River edition, including Streaming Ledger. So let's talk a little bit about the new security features that we've added um, with the latest release. For authentication, we decided to go with OpenID Connect. It's a standard based on OAuth 2.0, and um, it's widely supported by um, Google, for example, by Azure Active Directory, um, and also um, older authentication technologies such as LDAP or SAML are also supported by using um, DEX, for example. So DEX is a system originally developed at um, CoreOS, and it basically provides an open, uh, open ID connect um, endpoint and then talks to LDAP um, for doing the authentication. And we believe that this is... Um, the authentication solution that most companies will use in the future. For machine-to-machine -machine authentication, we added um, API access tokens. This is actually similar to uh, how GitHub, for example, is also doing um, access to their API. Um, so you can just generate a token um, and give it to Jenkins or any other um, like um, tool that is using the REST API for Application Manager. You can revoke tokens at any time and you can use token as if they were regular users um, in the access control. And um, access control is the next slide. Um, so for authorization, we have introduced role-based access control. So you can um, define roles that have access to certain resources such as deployments, save points, jobs, events from jobs, um, or user interfaces, and also the methods, the HTTP methods, so get, post, delete, and so on. So this way you can quite fine granular define um, who can do what. And for connecting these roles with um, users or groups, we have introduced role, role bindings, um, and both roles and role bindings are namespaced, um, but we also support cluster-wide roles if you want to create something like a super administrator. Um, and I've mentioned namespaces already, um, I think namespaces is a nice feature for sharing one um, DIA platform or application manager instance um, across multiple teams or some organizational units. Um, so basically it introduces multi-tenancy to the product. 
And one last thing that has been requested by our production users is um, the support for secret values so that you can separate knowledge of a secret from usage of a secret. So the classical example is that not everybody in your company um, can know the S3 um, access tokens. So you only have a very restricted set of people that can set the credentials for S3, but everybody in the organization can use them um, by just having like a variable um, in the, for example, configuration that you're passing into Flink. Um, and to sum it up, um, the roadmap um, used to have improved access control on there. This is now completed. We are now going to work on metadata management so that you can um, have an overview of the data streams that you're having within your organization. We want to introduce SQL as a first-class citizen into Data Artisan's platform, and we want to add more enterprise features such as um, multi-data center failover. Um, this is important, for example, for companies from the financial industry um, that want to fail over between entire data centers. Um, and this is actually quite nice to do in Application Manager because we have this declarative um, specifications of applications, so I just submit this to a different data center. Um, and that's it for my talk. Um, we have a virtual machine available on our website that you can download for trying out Data Artisan's platform. We are also um, having a trial version of the full Data Artisan's platform that you can install on Kubernetes because obviously you're limited by uh, memory um, on a virtual machine since we are only uh, like, yeah, since we include so many components for like logging and metrics, the memory footprint is quite large. Um, so for a serious evaluation, I would rather recommend to um, try out the Kubernetes version. And we have blog posts on how to set up um, Data Artists platform on um, Google Kubernetes Engine. And we have a blog post in the pipeline for how to set it up on AWS. Um, so it's actually quite easy to try it out um, also with your favorite cloud provider. Um, and that's it for my talk. And I'm happy to take some questions in the last few minutes. So for the namespaces, do you use the underlying Kubernetes namespace concept as well? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, do you use the underlying Kubernetes namespaces for uh, namespace, for the namespace feature? I mean, the, it's independent of the namespaces of Kubernetes. Um, so it's a concept that only exists within um, Application Manager. Um, but you can define the namespace you want to deploy um, jobs from Application Manager. So if you're using Application Manager, you can say, you can specify an Application Manager namespace within Kubernetes. And then all the jobs from Application Manager go into this namespace. And Application Manager also has the ability to talk to multiple um, namespaces within Kubernetes. But in theory, App Manager has its own namespace concept, and it, but it can talk to multiple Kubernetes namespaces. So I think it's the most flexible approach. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, roadmap and uh, mm -hmm. metadata management. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your plan to, to build up the own schema registry or mm, to, to make closer uh, integration with existing solutions? So yeah. So I, I cannot give you a definitive answer here because we haven't um, looked into the topic enough. But the idea is that we want to be able to show um, customer, uh, customers want to be able to understand how, for example, the different deployments that they've specified within Application Manager are related to each other. So they want to know this application feeds in that application. You know that they, they, you can basically draw a map of how your data flows within your organization. Secondly, we want to be able to abstract streams from their physical um, source. So if it's whether it's Kafka or a file in S3 or in HDFS, you want to have some abstract stream that is implemented by something. Um, and in Flink, you also usually need um, to know the event time field, for example, or a watermark generator. And for SQL support, we also need to know the schema of a stream. And that's why, um, basically, for SQL, um, having metadata management in the product is a requirement. And we, we are trying to tackle these, basically, these two things at once. So 
we have some ideas about um, making the schema information that um, we have for SQL. We also want to make this available to the application developer that is working in Java, Scala, or in the future maybe also Python. Okay, um, I think the time is over anyways, so thanks a lot for your questions and your attention, and if there are more questions, um, just reach out to me, Ufuk, or just come to our booth. Thank you.